one man. One mission. One camera. And a couple of coffees. One shot to photograph one animal. Failure is not an option. Yeah! Every good photography mission starts with a strong coffee. So let's do that. Yes, it will be decaf. <laughs> Just a uh, decaf stole shop that white please mate. Okay. Perfect. Alright, All right, have a good day. Thanks guys, see ya. So what we're up to today, I'm breaking out the big guns, the telephoto lens, the 200 to 600 with the 1.4 teleconverter on it. And we're on the hunt for a white-bellied sea eagle. It's a bird that's been really elusive to me before. Like I've photographed it a few times and I've got a couple of okay shots, but I have never got a great shot of one. So the mission is to go around to these locations where I've seen them over the years and just sit and wait and see if I can get the shot. So we have got a bit of an overcast day today. It's a little bit gray up there in the sky. And uh, the only thing I'd say about the grey sky when photographing wildlife is when you get, especially birds, when you get them up against the grey sky, they often don't look that great. It's not, not that appealing having the birds against the grey sky. So, you know, I'm going to try some high locations where hopefully the bird will be lower than me or, you know, maybe I can get some water in the shot or something as well. And uh, it might look a bit more appealing today. So we're going to go to some high places and just sit out there for a little while. So what these birds tend to do is they, they'll fly up really high and just fly up and down the coastline. So the idea is to check a few spots and see if we can find one and wait for it to do something cool. And of course, you know, if I see something else, I'll definitely be photographing that along the way. But um, it's all about the white belly sea eagle for this mission. That's what I'm keen to shoot. So I've set myself a pretty high target to get a good shot of one of those because it's been years without getting a shot and uh, lots of disappointment. But um, I think with the newer camera and lens setup I've got as well, it's really gonna help, you know, nail the shot. So anyway, let's get this mission started. I think what I'm going to have to do is probably head inside the bay somewhere where it's a bit calmer. Maybe I'll have more chance of finding one. Mind you, it's meant to be summer and it's bloody cold. I should have brought a jumper. <laughs> Crazy. I have got my uh, Gore-Tex there if I need it, but uh, yeah, look, no birds at this location. Let's move on. No white belly sea eagle, just a couple of seagulls. Nothing against you fellas. But uh, you're not the target species. All right, let's keep moving on. Well, that was kind of cool. Just as I was leaving, a little shearwater flew in. And check out these two photographs. You'll see there's that one taken with that gray sky behind it. Not very nice. It's just not as pleasing. And uh, check out this one where he's up against a bit of a rock in the water. I think that's way nicer. And that's what I was getting at. When there's gray skies, the light's nice and soft. But the problem is, you know, up against the gray sky, unless you've got some sort of backlit by a bit of a sun or something, it's just not as pleasing to the eye. All right, location three, and I can see some shearwaters and uh, sooty oyster catchers hanging out in the rock down here. So I'm gonna see if I can get some shots of them. They're not doing anything exciting, they're just standing there. But um, yeah, we'll have a go at that. But unfortunately, no sea eagle. They're just snuggling up there away from the cold air. I don't blame them, it's actually quite chilly. One thing I am dealing with right now is there's two that sort of just off plane of focus and they look really nice focused together. So if you have two subjects, 
that aren't on the same plane of focus with your wildlife and you want to photograph them both and get them both sharp, you need to stop down and give yourself more depth of field. The other thing I'm doing in this situation too, because my subjects aren't moving, I've actually changed my focus point just to a single focus spot. And that allows me really to zone in where I want the focus point to be. Still have the eye auto focus on for birds with my camera, but it just really helps if you've got that single point of focus. I can really nail exactly where I want that focus to be. Location four. I haven't seen a sea eagle anywhere. In fact, I haven't even seen another bird, so. Uh, let's move on, next location. As I was walking back to a car, a bin chicken flew in, a little white ibis, so. There are birds around here, just not many. We can get a photograph of him. All right, location five, not much happening. Definitely no sea eagles. I can see some more sheer waters and that out in the rocks out there. But uh, we've already photographed those today. So yeah, moving along. All right, just walking back to the car, <laughs> a little magpie landed on a post in front of me. So had to take the shot and uh, it turned out all right. Not a bad little shot of a magpie. He's just standing on the post, but uh, it's okay. So we did get a shot from location five, but still not that sea eagle. I think my first idea, you know, four locations ago was to head inside the bay and check along there rather than out here along the ocean side of the coast. And uh, I think that might be the plan. So that's what we have to go do. All right, see you soon. Location six, zero. All right, so we're down inside the harbour now and uh, can't see any seagulls flying around. Man, this is difficult, but check this out. This is really cool. We have some pelicans. All right, so I'm gonna get a portrait of one of these guys. Oh, these guys are so cool. Getting some cool portraits of them here. Well, that was super cool, but no white belly seagull. On to the next location. All right, right at our next location now, and no seagulls, I can't believe it. Oh, I nearly always see them at this location. I don't know where they are. They must be just allergic to me today or something. <laughs> but anyway, what is cool is uh, there are some rainbow lorikeets around. They're up in the trees eating the blossoms, and uh, got a couple of really good shots of those. Which, a little tip, why at this location too, because I'm pointing up at the trees, because they're quite high, the trees where the blossoms they're eating, you know, I'm getting a bit of that sky in the background. So I've had to overexpose my camera a little bit. So I do shoot it in auto ISO and that allows me to easily access the exposure compensation on top of the camera and uh, easily dial in my exposure. So I was about to stop over for this one and uh, they seem to come out all right. All right, <laughs> on to the next location. All right, another location. We're in some mangroves here and Usually there's a big fella that flies over the back and comes hunting along here. I just can't see any. Not one around. Oh, there's not one sighting of a sea eagle soaring that I can hang around and wait for the shot. It's just unbelievable. It's been, what time is it now? 12. So I've been going for seven hours now and haven't seen one. So. Yeah, I'm gonna go pack it in for a while and then hopefully I can get back out and continue this mission. Well, good morning, day two, our mission continues. And of course we have mm, fresh decaf, ooh baby, that's good. And uh, I think today the plan should be, let's hit the same locations again, just to see if we can find, find this white-bellied sea eagle. And uh, just before I go, look at this thing fresh pistachio cannoli. All right, I'm gonna smash this with my coffee and uh, yeah, hit up location one. See you soon. Location one, no luck, I think. Nope, nothing, nothing. Nope, nothing. Nope, nothing. Nope, nothing. nothing. All right, that's nine locations. I just haven't seen one. Not one. And these are all locations that I've previously seen them before. So they're not just random spots I picked out. 
I've seen white belly seagulls at these locations over the years before. But one last location that'll make 10 locations, oh, which is crazy to me, and we still haven't seen one. Anyway, let's go check that out. Let's see what happens. Maybe today the weather's just too rough for them. There's too much wind, I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, quickly check this location and just see if we can see anything here. Nope, no luck. All right, <laughs> unfortunately, no white belly sea eagle. I can't believe it. I usually see them everywhere. It's just absolutely crazy to me that there's none around. Anyway, you get that on the big jobs. I'm not going to count this as mission fail. I'm going to count this as mission to be continued. So there will be another video continuing this mission at some stage. But uh, look, we did 10 hours, 10 different locations, and eight of those locations, you know, we went back to twice over two days. So. Yeah, I just don't know where they are. It's just crazy to me. Look, I managed to get a couple of good photographs still, which I'm really happy about. So let's jump over to the computer and I'll show you how I processed one of those. Alrighty, welcome back in the studio. No white-bellied sea eagle, but we have got this cool pelican shot. Let's take a look at this. And I've got a few ideas around this one. This is the raw file here that we're looking at. And I just like this profile shot uh, of the feathers and that from the background. And we've got a nice, soft, you know, bokeh in the background, nothing too distracting. I can see there's a little bit of a cleanup needed there. What I am thinking might be pretty cool with this shot, just because of the way it is. You know, the way I like it, it's just a different angle. Um, it's not something you see all the time. So I really, really like that about this photograph. It's just something a little bit different. So let's go here to a one by one. And I think a square crop is gonna work really, really nicely with this. And I like the, the angles that we've got this diagonal of the beak and the head coming up on the right third, but a little bit of space for him looking into there. But what I am gonna do, I'm just gonna go to a black and white. And what I'm gonna do is hold down the shift key now, double click whites and double click blacks. And that's gonna set my white and black point there. And if it's too, too much white, you just pull that back a little bit, however you like. Might pull them highlights down just a touch there. And I think the important thing about this photograph is going to be the texture. That's what I'm really, really interested in. So I am going to just add a little bit of a vignette around the outside there, nothing too strong. If you never know what the settings of the vignette are gonna do, just darken it totally. Play around with the midpoint and the roundness, how you like it, okay? So however you like the roundness. And then I always like to feather it all the way. And then what you can do is just drop the vignette back to taste okay so maybe just something like that looks pretty good liking that liking that I'm gonna bump them highlights up a little bit there yeah that's cool all right so there's the before after before after all right so what we do want to do is and i'd like to do this with my black and whites is actually push the blacks a little bit harder so i'm just going to make it a little bit more black in there and you'll see where the the, the black indicator up the top here you can see we are getting some true blacks in our frame there, which I really actually like that, okay? So I'm gonna go up here to the masking tool, select subject here, and just make sure we're reset here, make sure everything's reset. It's done a really good job of selecting the subject. And what I wanna do is come down here to clarity and D and texture, that's what I'm after. So a little bit of extra clarity, a little bit of extra texture there. Oh yeah, loving that, loving that. And what that's doing is just adding a little bit more to the frame here. I'm gonna try something. There's no catch light in his eye and the eye of your wildlife photography is super, super important. So I'm gonna just zoom in here. Let's see if we can add a catch light. Let's just see if this works. So I'm gonna add a little radial filter in here, okay. I'm just gonna try and add a little bit of catch light there. And I know some might be saying this is faking or whatever, but it's just, you just wanna bring up, just add a little bit more depth and dimension to the eye. And I think this will really help that. I'm gonna push the whites up a little bit, just a little bit. Open up them shadows there a little bit. And now what I'm gonna do is I always like to do is zoom back out. You know, zoom out a little bit there and just have a look. And you can see the difference that little catch light has made already. It's just brought that eye to life. So that's before, after, and we can play around with it a little bit there, make it a little bit bigger if we want to. Just bring it in there like that. So let's have a look at that one. Before, after, before, after, before. Yeah, that's looking cool. It's just given a little bit more dimension to that eye there. Just have a little bit more contrast there. So um, yeah, I really like that. So let's go back out now and we have a look before, after. Yeah, I'll just get rid of that masking so you can see what's going on there. 
and before, after, before, after. Yeah, that's looking really cool. All right. So that's looking good. I'm liking where we're at now. Now we'll just do our final sharpening here. We're going to detail, we'll bump up the sharpening to around 70 or 80. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. And I'm gonna hold down the options key and drag the masking slider out. And what that's doing, it's just masking out everything. So everything that's black is being masked out and not affected by the sharpening. And everything that's white is being affected by the sharpening. So all the edges around the beautiful pelican there. And I'm also going to bring up the detail. So if you hold down the shift as well, you can see you can bring out the finer detail in the frame, which I think is really cool. And then I'm going to play around with that radius as well. Just bring that radius up a bit. Again, just holding down the options key on uh, a Mac and alt key on Windows does that. So and that's cool. Oh, I've got some beautiful texture there. I really like that. I think that black and white of that Pelican has turned out really, really nice. All right, good people, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this epic photo mission. Even though we didn't get the shot we're after, still come away with some lovely photographs, which I'm super happy with. Hey, do me a favor. If you're enjoying these videos, give me a thumbs up. Chuck a comment below if you've got uh, some feedback or a question for me. And if you want to see the next video in this series when I get a chance to film it and finally crack that shot of the white belly sea eagle, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.